Mayank Mishra asks, is the rise of Hindutva proportional to the growth of the Muslim middle class? Even before one could realize, the accusation of the politics of appeasement, which is a euphemism for a perceived bias among certain parties for Muslims, has given way to unka man bahut bad gaya hai. They, meaning the Muslims, have become very aggressive. Indifference towards community, once considered economically backward, has given way to outright ridicule, often bordering on hatred. Recent cases of mob lynching in the name of cow protection or otherwise are manifestations of this changing attitude towards Muslims in the country. Secularists blame what they call the politics of hatred, repackaged now as something in the national interest, being pursued by the Saffron Brigade for this sorry state of affairs. They also blame the fringe elements of the minority community for openly espousing equally divisive politics, adding fuel to the fire. They believe that the culture of coexistence is the core and the fringe elements are about to destroy that. However, anti-secularists, whose ranks have swelled exponentially in the last few years, attribute the growing clashes to an action-begets-reaction theory. If they do it, they deserve to be paid back with interest, so goes the argument of the burgeoning tribe of anti-secularists. They always blame the other for all the problems. Some are real, but many others are purely imaginary. Different arguments and justifications aside, why would people allow politicians to divide communities if that meant sacrificing the goodwill they have enjoyed for decades? Data on the changing economic conditions of Muslims since the year 2000 offers some answers. Based on National Sample Survey Organization data, social scientists Sandhya Krishnan and Neeraj Hatekar have mapped the growth of the new middle class according to different social categories from 1999 to 2000 to 2011-12 in a study in Economic and Political Weekly published on June 3, 2017. The authors have included all those who spent 2 to 10 dollars, which would be roughly 130 to 650 rupees per capita day in the new middle class. What stands out is the sharp differential in the growth and size of new middle class among Muslims and upper caste Hindus. According to the NSSO data analyzed, while the size of Muslim middle class grew by a whopping 86% between 1999 2000 to 2011 12, that of the Hindu middle class went up by an impressive 76%. However, the size of the new middle class of other castes, meaning non-OBC, non-SC and non-ST Hindus, grew by a mere 45% during that period. What explains the somewhat better relative performance of Muslims in recent years? I had written elsewhere that the Sachar Committee report, one of the most comprehensive and authoritative sources of information on socio-economic status of Indian Muslims, offers some answers. The report says, while the share of Muslim workers engaged in agriculture is much lower than for other groups, their participation in manufacturing and trade, especially for men, is much higher than for other SRCs or socio-religious categories. Besides, their participation in the construction work is also high. The report adds that besides construction, the participation of Muslim workers is quite high in retail and wholesale trade, land transport, automobile repair, manufacture of tobacco products, textiles and apparel, and fabricated metal products. Incidentally, while agriculture has seen very modest growth in the post-liberalization years, manufacturing and services, trade in particular, have grown at a much faster clip. Since Muslims have traditionally been associated with non-agriculture sectors, they have reaped the benefits of economic reforms launched in 1991 better than other communities. This is why the growth in size of middle class among Muslims has outpaced others. Is Dilo ki Duri a result of jealousy? The relative outperformance of one social community may have disturbed the already existing social equilibrium, giving rise to suspicion and outright hatred. No wonder we keep hearing despicable expressions being used to describe the others in areas with a history of communal tension. To quote, Inki aukat kya thi? Lekin ab inke bache fancy bikes par baithkar malls jaate hain aur hamari ladkiyon se aankhe ladate hain. Or to translate, what was their worth? But their children? Now they roam in fancy bikes, go to malls and harass our girls. A Hindu told me in Western UP's Meerut just a few years ago. 
Now, such expressions heard all too frequently in many parts of the country in today's day and age are perhaps a result of the feeling of getting left out. A result of the feeling of relative deprivation, perhaps. Fringe elements from both the sides have been all too eager to exploit this.